Hey there, Miranda Wilson here with another fun lesson idea from Science Journal for Kids. Today, we're going to be focusing on a really cool activity modeling natural selection. The activity can be done with middle school students, but I've done it with my high school biology classes also. I usually do this as one of the first activities in my evolution unit, right after I've introduced the subject of natural selection. The activity also addresses a current health-related impact of natural selection antibiotic resistance. Normally, we have millions of harmless bacteria living in and on our bodies. Our immune system keeps their populations in check, but when we get overwhelmed, we take antibiotics to help fight off the infection. Each bacterial population contains natural variation in their resistance to whatever antibiotics we're taking. Antibiotics kill off the least resistant individuals of the bacteria first, and the most resistant individuals last. That's why it's so important to take a full course of antibiotics, so that we make sure to kill off the most resistant bacteria in the end. If we don't, these most resistant bacteria will go on reproducing, and over time, we can get fully antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria. The materials for this activity can be purchased, but all you really need is three different colors of tokens and some dice. You could use beans or M&Ms or even little pieces of paper that are different colors. Whatever you have on hand will work wonderfully. So in this activity, students start with a population of bacteria that varies in its resistance to the antibiotic. This is shown using the three different colors of tokens. Students will roll the die each time they're supposed to take their antibiotics. If students roll one, three, five, or six, they have successfully taken their medicine and killed the bacteria. They remove five tokens. The important thing to remind students is that they should remove the least resistant bacteria first. If students roll a 2 or a 4, they've forgotten to take their medicine, and nothing happens. After the dice roll and adjustment of the bacteria numbers, students tally how many bacteria of each color they have. Then the bacteria reproduce. Students always forget this step, but just remind them that bacteria grow quickly, and we need to account for that. Students need to add one token of each color they have left to represent those bacteria reproducing. So for example, if we have blue, yellow, and red tokens left, we would add one blue, one yellow, and one red token to our population. But if we have only yellow and red tokens left, then we would only add one yellow and one red. Students will complete eight rounds of antibiotics and record their data each round. Some students will take all their antibiotics and kill off the bacteria. Others will forget their antibiotics and their bacteria population will grow. I usually have my students graph their data so they can see the trend better. There are two example graphs and data tables at the end of the activity so you can see what they might look like. The questions in this activity are great for having students think through what's happening and to start describing natural selection. This activity would go great along with our article titled, What Can Tree Frogs in Chernobyl Tell Us About Radiation? Researchers found that tree frogs living closer to the Chernobyl power plant had darker skin coloration than those living farther away. They think this might be because melanin in their skin might protect them from radiation. These were the frogs that could reproduce, and eventually the whole population of tree frogs near the power plant were darker. This is a great real-world example of natural selection to share with your students. This activity would also go along great with any of our articles on evolution, like how will dragonflies adapt to a warmer earth, which has a great lesson designed by a science journal for kids educators to look at the role of different survival traits in natural selection. Or you can check out our collection of evolution articles under our collection drop-down menu. Don't forget to take a look at our videos at the bottom of the article page when you're planning your class time. There's always a video meant to introduce the topic of the article to your students. For each adapted article, we also provide an audio version of the article being read for those students who might need some extra help with their reading skills. You can access our audio versions on the web page for each adapted article or on the Science Journal for Kids YouTube channel. That's all for today. If you'd like more teaching tips and ideas for lesson planning, please check out the audio or video versions of our Lesson Ideas podcast. 
Also, make sure to check out our Ask a Scientist videos for short interviews with some of our researchers. You can find them on our YouTube channel as well. If you have questions or comments, please share them in the feedback form on our website. You can also sign up for our free monthly newsletter to learn about our latest content. And as always, please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.